You've probably heard a lot of hype about how chatbots can write amazing code in any language, fix any bugs, and review any code like a pro. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's all not true. Chatbots are not your friends. They're not even your helpers. They might be your worst enemies. In this video, I'm going to show you why you should never trust chatbots for coding in R. R is a powerful and popular language for data analysis and visualization, but it's also very tricky and complex. And chatbots, they don't understand R. They don't know how to use it properly. And they don't care about your code quality of your results. To prove my point, I'm going to put two of the most famous chatbots to the test, Bing AI and Google Bard. These are supposed to be the best of the best, the cream of the crop, the top of the line. But are they really? I'm going to challenge them with some tasks in code reviewing, debugging, and code generation in R. By the end of this video, you will see why chatbots are not reliable for coding in R and why you should avoid them at all costs. Chatbots may be good for some things, but coding in R is not one of them. Trust me, you don't want to miss this one. It's going to be hilarious and shocking. So stay tuned and let's get started. Let's check what these fellows are made of. So I split my screen between the white background, which is Bing AI, and the dark background, which is Google Bard. And the first task is code review. We will take one chunk from one of my previous tutorials on mapping city expansion, and then we will check one of the functions that I created on making buffers and ask these two gentlemen what they think about it. I wrote a very simple prompt asking Bing AI to review my code. So let's see what it gives us. All right, here are the results of Bing AI's output. First of all, it structured its response around analyzing every specific line of code. So over here, you can actually see uh, that it recognizes each of the elements that belong to R, and then also goes into uh, trying to understand some variables such as, for example, this CRS long lat, which are not defined. And it rightly recognizes that this probably refers to the WGS84 coordinate reference system, which was correct. Then it goes on and on to understand how we actually computed this, what we used. All of this is more or less correct. The second part of this uh, response is some possible improvements. One of them is that we can add some more comments to this code. So to better explain to people who are outsiders what's going on. And the second one is checking if the input variables are actually true, if they exist. And then in the last part of this review, uh, Bing AI offered the code that would allow us to check if these uh, variables that I defined, like CRS longlet and uh, these daily borders, if they exist. So this actually would also make the function more uh, flexible and reusable according to being AI. So, so far, not bad. Let's see what Google Bard has to offer regarding the same question. I'm just gonna copy here and paste my code and click run. Whoa, this was super fast and Google Bard definitely beats Bing AI when it comes to response speed but it is less elaborate when it comes to response itself. This is a much shorter response and it misses also some parts that we had in a Bing AI response. And one of them is analyzing the functions and the variables you use and the overall logic of your code. So this is missing. The second part, which is similar among the two, is uh, the suggestions. So here we can see that Google Bard also offers some suggestions how to improve the code. One of them is to add comments. So this is along the lines of also Bing AI suggestion. The second one is quite interesting. It suggests using the plier pipe operator instead of the pipe operator from base R. Uh, I would accept actually this answer as, as fine because perhaps some users don't have newer versions of R, but by this time there are also many who have moved on to the new version. So I don't really see the purpose of using the deep plier pipe completely. And then the final one is actually incorrect because there is no such function as estimate circle. So here Google Bar suggests, hey, why don't you use estimate circle instead of estimate buffer since it's more efficient? Well, guess what, Google Bar? There is no such function. So this was a bit of a fail here. Now, the last part is using the suggestions uh, here. And this is where Google Bard actually shines. In a sense, it offers you a full code with incorporated comments from it. Unfortunately, one of them is incorrect, but it's actually quite a good thing if you want to go and test this chunk of code. In the second part, we will test how good advisors are these two tools when it comes to code debugging. And instead of providing them with some generic error message, I'm going to go ahead and deliberately create an error for them. That's right. I'm going to go and grab a chunk from one of my previous tutorials, and then I'm going to alter one of the lines with a wrong argument. Then I'm going to run the code, 
produce an error. And then I'm going to use these both pieces of information. So both the error message and the chunk of code and ask both Bing AI and Google Bard to assist us with this. All right, Bing, it's your time to shine. I ask here, why do we receive this error message when I run this code? So let's see what we get. And Bing got it right. It says that instead of using a longitude, I should have been using a long argument, which is part of Ray Vista function. So great job. Let's copy the same message, paste it to Google Bard and see what we got there. And Google Bard also got it right. It says that the argument longitude is incorrect and I should be using launch because Ray Vista doesn't have a longitude argument. But an additional thing is providing a correct chunk of the code that we can just immediately copy and then paste into an editor is a plus here. And one funny thing is also the way it's changed this comment. You remember that I had this is wrong. And now when it's corrected, this line is set here in the comment, this is correct. So that's pretty, pretty hilarious. In this final round of the epic battle between Bing AI and Google Bard, I want to explore if these two chatbots can help us create maps in R. So I want to conduct two exercises. The first one is if they can provide some dummy data in a workable code. And the second one is whether they can provide a workable code and use a real data. In this first exercise, we'll be asking Bing AI and Google Bard to create a population map for us. I'm not going to specify either the country or the packages that should be used or the data. So it's totally up to them what they decide to use. Let's start off by asking Bing AI to show us an example of code in R that creates a population density map. Honestly, I'm quite impressed with the solution offered by Bing AI to build a 3D population map using Ray Shader and Contour dataset, which by the way, we did in one of the previous tutorials. And I'm super curious if this is gonna work. I expected it's gonna go for some simpler solution, like let's say 2D population density map using ggplot2 or other package. Yeah, this is pretty mind blowing. So let's check out if this is going to run and create a map. We have the code, let's analyze it against our benchmarks. First of all, I find it impressive that Bing AI went for real instead of a dummy data, even though the question was pretty much open-ended. The second thing is it went for a very ambitious project. Instead of suggesting a 2D population density map, here we have a code that should create a 3D population map with a ray shader and the contour package. Now to the code itself. One thing that I noticed from the very start is that Bing AI does not consider that you might not have these three packages, Ratio, Tidyverse, and SF installed. So it goes right ahead and says, yeah, let's just load them, which is not always the case. So luckily I do have them installed, but if you don't have, this is not gonna work from you from code, from the line one of the code. The second thing is I checked this URL that it suggests and I managed to download it. But the suggestion of the dataset itself is not so good because this will download the global dataset while the code tries to create a map of the Netherlands, so a country level. And Contour offers a country level dataset. So I don't really understand why uh, the AI here went for the global dataset. So that's one thing. And then the thing where actually the code breaks is right here where it starts to create this pop object by reading this compressed CSV file. So it tries to read a compressed CSV file using a read CSV function, which is designed for reading the compressed CSV file. So this is where the code breaks and I was not able to actually continue further and, you know, uh, find whether this actually runs or not. Let's see how Google Bard handles the first task of creating a population density map. Once again, Google Bard is explosive with its response, but it's also less ambitious than Bing AI. It goes for a 2D map with ggplot2 as a package solution. Unfortunately for us, this is simply a demonstrative code. So it shows you what you can use if you had the data and it doesn't even offer a dummy data. So we are not really able to use this code to create something. So far, we had no luck creating a map either with Bing AI or with Google Bard, but let's give them another chance. This time I'm going to modify the first prompt and I'm going to ask them to show me an example of code in R that creates a population density map using real data. And we will start off here with Bing AI. 
Once again, we got a very interesting solution from Bing AI. It goes again with an example of the Netherlands, but this time it suggests using world pop data on population density, which is in a raster format. So if you haven't checked one of my previous tutorials, we also use this data set to create three types of population density maps. What is interesting in this one is that the code is much shorter, so it's up to the point, and I really hope that this time we can be really successful at creating our first population density map using one of these chatbots. We back in the editor with the hope that this time we can really, really create a map, and it looks promising so far. So uh, going to the code itself, again, my main complaint here is that uh, Bing AI does not really understand that maybe these packages are not installed and that first you should install the packages. Going to the next line where we download and read the population for the Netherlands. So uh, here we're using raster to uh, get the file directly from its web source. But guess what? When I try to download or to get this, the URL does not exist so error 404 so basically this time i could not really get past uh loading the library so i could not even load the data so another failed attempt with Bing ai with something that really looked very very promising and legit at first sight Bing ai has miserably failed us so i'm going back to google bart with the hope that we will finally be able to get a workable code so I'm asking the same question. Show me an example of code in R that creates population density map using real data. Bart, what are you doing? I thought when I saw World Pop 2023 Pop Dance One Kilometer that we are actually here dealing with the actual data that we can run this code. But unfortunately, what Google Bart did here is it provided the name of some data set, but it didn't tell us where to find it. So we are not even able to run this code. We are not able to pass the, the phase, which is simply loading these libraries. So once again, we're not able to create a map with Google Bard. All right, guys, here we are at the end of our journey of comparing Bing AI versus Google Bard when it comes to coding with R. We tested three things. The first one was code review. And here I would say that Bing AI did a bit better job than Google Bard. So Bing AI here offered us not only um, the explanation of our main functions and variables that we use, also gave us a few meaningful suggestions, and at the end also provided us a code that we can use. While Google Bard started off without even analyzing the code that we have, so we could not really learn from it anything. It did offer us a few suggestions. One of them was along the lines of Bing AI, but uh, overall, some of them were not so meaningful at all. In the end, it did offer us a code that we could potentially run. In the second exercise, we tested how good are these two chatbots when it comes to code debugging. And here, I actually created a real error, and then I copied that error message into the box together with the code that I used. And here I can say that both uh, Bing AI and Google Bard really caught the error message. So they found what the problem is. They even suggested what to do. And they were also a bit witty with changing that comment. And then we came to the third one. This is where uh, we actually tried to generate some code that would produce a map. And here we had two tests. So one was simply, you know, generate any kind of population density map. I don't care if it's a dummy data. I just want it to be to work and I want to create a map based on that. The second one was more robust because we asked for the two chatbots to come up with real data. Now, what it comes down to is that both chatbots miserably failed. So we could not even get past the point of loading the library. So the functions were not working. In the case of Google Bard, we even didn't have any data, not even the dummy data who, uh, that we can use to work. So the overall, um, I would say, review here of my review based on these few cases. So this is not exhaustive, but based on these cases, what I can say is 
uh, these two chatbots and especially Bing AI are good for code review and debugging, but in terms of generating maps, do not use them at all at this point. The model is simply not good. It's not gonna give you a working example. You're gonna spend a lot of time banging your head against the wall. So that was my assessment. It's a bit disappointing, but let's see what the future brings and whether AI models will be better developed. Well, anyways, if you want to expand your knowledge of data visualization and mapping with R, here I am. I have a few cool tutorials, so do check them out. And also, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, feel free to reach out to me here on YouTube, but also on X and Instagram. See you next time.